Hey everyone, it's Robin. This is two times today. We're going live because I've got some fun things to show you. I'm Robin from Center Street Decor, SVGs and more. And I make SVG files for your laser and your silhouette uh, cutters. So what we've got today is earlier today, I went live and painted this darling little beehive and this little tag fresh honey so i painted these for a beaded garland and first i'm going to show you how to make a tassel and if you watch that live i thought it was pretty funny because i couldn't even think of what the words were for a beaded tassel what parts were what but i think we figured it out so um earlier i showed these really darling, darling beaded tassels that we made. So these are the tags and they're the SVG file that's available. There are three tags that are available in that file. There's this honey, which has this little honey dipper. And then we made a, I made that yesterday. And then we have the be kind and then that one looks like that and here is the garland and then the tassel that i made yesterday as well not on a live but i did make them yesterday but today we are going to make a tassel i'm going to show you how to use the tassel maker that i have an svg file in my shop so today we are going to put this together and make a tassel to go with it and then the garland that's all beaded Yesterday we painted beads to go, sorry, my chair. <laughs> so yesterday we painted um, the beads for these garlands. Oh, and the beads are really cute. We just um, did some polka dots on them and you will see as you saw. So I'm gonna bring it down and I'm gonna show you the supplies that we're gonna use today. I sound like I'm out of breath, huh? Cause I've been running, doing some things and I came back and um, I might have to leave in a few minutes to go finish doing one thing with dinner, but um, it's a while, so we might be okay. Maybe maybe I can go really fast. We'll see. Okay, let's just tip you down. Okay. All righty. Okay. So lots of stuff on my desk today. Okay, so um, the beads that I did, these are some of the beads that we made. We actually, we painted those black and then we, on the live yesterday, I painted these, this gold color and painted them with the polka dots. And then yesterday after the live, I went ahead and painted the black ones and put the polka dots on there. I thought that would be fun. So these are the supplies that I bought and I just buy, these big packs of beads on Amazon. So these are the tiniest ones and I can't tell you the size, but I'm guessing, I was gonna say 10 millimeter, but uh, I, couldn't, I could be wrong. They are probably about a quarter inch. What is my ruler? So, and then I think they're probably about a quarter inch. So then these, are the ones I probably use the most because I use these a lot on Christmas ornaments um, uh, with the hanger. But this is, um, I want to say these are 16 millimeters and I just buy the big bags and I paint them myself and sometimes um, I just leave them the natural color. And then I have this size, which I would say this is probably three quarters of an inch. So maybe 20 millimeter, mm, not really sure. But these are what I used to paint my beads yesterday. Okay, so let's put these aside. And then I also use twine and it, this is the twine that I buy on Amazon. It comes as a three pack. Um, and I wanna say, let's see, this, this says, 380 feet, one millimeter. And then I think it's, it has a two there for two ply. But this is what I buy in the three pack. And then once I open this pack, 
I usually buy another one. So I always have plenty on hand because I really like this twine. I like the thickness of it. Works great for ornaments. It works great for all the twine things that I like to do. Okay. Um, and then ribbons. When we make our tassel, um, we are going to use this tassel maker. This is available as an SVG file. It's very inexpensive in my shop, but it's just a handy little tool to have when you're making these tassels. And we're going to go ahead and make one. Um, and then I just grab ribbons. So whatever my colors, my project is, I just grab some of my ribbons. These are some that I thought would go great with it. Um, and so we are going to go ahead and make um, make a tassel. That's what we're going to do to get started. I'm going to put my little readers on because I like them. They are handy. So first things first, when you get this file, you'll see that there's a few notches in the side. Okay. And then there's a line here and a line here. And then that's just to remind you that this is the first thing that I do is I just get a piece of twine and I put it through the first slit and then the second one and then I bring it around the back. I need a little bit more. Usually I cut this, I put it on and then trim it. This piece I just had laying here. And then I bring it around the back side and put it through this slit. This is, we were gonna use this at the very end after we make our tassel but it's handy to have here. It's kind of one of the first things that I um, I like to do. Okay, so this, this sometimes I use this piece right here and sometimes I don't. We'll just see how, how it goes, this little slit here. Okay, so what I like to do is with my twine, I don't usually cut it um, any particular length to get going, but I wrap it. Between, anywhere between 20 and 25 times, depending on how thick you like your tassel. And this is this is what I like. And I would say this is 20, probably around 20. Okay, so that's what I like to use. Another thing I like to use, let me pull this out. This is, um, it's called an easy beater. I did get this on Amazon. But if you, any, if you have um, like wire, any wire you have will work just fine too. So you don't have to have this tool. It's just one, since I have it, I use it. Um, but wire, wire comes in handy. Um, so that's what I like to use. So we will use that um, toward the end of our tassel. Okay, so first things first, I just leave it on the roll and then I am going to wrap this. I'm just gonna start wrapping. So I usually leave a little bit of a tail to start with, um, and then I start wrapping. And I just try to wrap it like in between. You can see this rectangle cut out. I just kind of start like in the middle. So, so one, two, three, four, five. So I count both sides, the front side, back side. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13. So what I usually do, once I get to about around 15, or sometimes I wait till the end of 20, then I put my ribbons on. But this time, and that's what I did here. You can see I have my ribbons on, on the outside. But I thought this time, I'm gonna put some a little bit so there's more in the center. So I'm just gonna try that. So I think I said I had around, oh, I totally lost count. Can we rewind the video for a second? <laughs> Let's rewind. Let's rewind. Okay, so anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's begin again. You guys are like, I know how many you had, and you're probably yelling at me. This is how many you had, but okay. One, two, three. Okay, so I got 10 right now. So I am gonna go ahead and wrap, I'm gonna grab this. And again, you can trim these beforehand, just measure. And I, I do like to leave a little bit hanging over the edge 
and bring it down the other side. And then I will just snip it with my scissors. Okay. And then maybe I'll wrap it a couple more times. Let's add this one I'm not going to use, but let's add, not this one, let's add, hmm, I think I want to add this gold one. So I'm going to add some extra, extra ribbon on this one than I did the other ones. Just, just trying something new. Okay, so I know I'm at 12. My ribbon is running away from me, or my twine, I mean, it's running away from me. Okay, 20, I think I did about, I think I did about 24. So now I'm gonna add um, three pieces of ribbon. So I think I wanna do, let's see. One more with this gold. And then I'm gonna do one of this lacy ribbon. And I've had these ribbon for years. I've had them a long time. And then I'm gonna add one more. And I think I have just, just enough of this. And I'm going to wrap this around. Okay. That one's all done. Okay. So if you feel like you need to wrap it one more time, you can. But otherwise, that's enough. Okay. So now this is where I will use that slit, that last slit at the very end. So I take that piece and then, so whether you're at the front or the back, just, I'm going to pull it through just so it holds it in place for me. It's just going to hold it just still right there. And then I'm going to snip kind of a long tail. Okay, so I'm going to put this down for just a minute. We're just going to leave that there. Clear my little area so it doesn't look too, too messy. Okay, so now I need a piece of twine. And I am just going to guess about, oh, maybe about 14 inches or so. So 14, 16, anywhere 20. We're going to set that aside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this piece and we are going to wrap it. We're going to wrap it around in here. So first I'll take it down the inside and the outside. I'm gonna mesh, I'm gonna, gonna meet, meet them up, find the center, bring my two ends together, and this is where I'm gonna tie a knot. And I tie it not right next to the top, but I just bring it down just a little bit. And I just, I pull it kind of, I pull it snug, and then I tie a knot. Okay. And the reason why I like all of this extra right here is because now we're going to take one end is going to be wrapped around counterclockwise and the other one clockwise, um, whichever way you look at it. So I'll take one to the inside and bring it around and I'm wrapping on the top side of my knot. So depending on how long my string is, is how long I go. Let's see if I can do one more. Okay, because I like to have a, at least enough that it's long, as long or longer than these, the bottom of my ribbon. Okay, so once I pull it there, now I need to do the other one and wrap it the other direction. Okay, 
And now this time I'm going um, below my knot that I have there. Okay. So I'm just using my finger on the back side here to push that twine through. That helps me. Okay. So this is the last time. Yeah. Okay. So now that I have my two pieces here, I'm going to tie another knot. So I'm just going to tie, and it doesn't matter whether it's above or below. Okay, so now that I have that wrapped up, the, the knot there. So what I'm going to do now is this is when you bring in your piece of wire. You can also use a bobby pin if you have one handy. Um, I have three girls. We always had them around the house. So I am actually going to bring, bring it up and underneath. And you can come up in the middle. You can come up in the very top, whichever you like. I'm just going to come up. And wherever it kind of pops out is where I'll go. It's really not this hard. I don't know why. I'm making it complicated. I guess I'll go ahead and go to the top of it. We'll go to the top. Okay, so then this is where I'm going to take those two ends. I'll put one end through, and then I'll put the other one through. Just not all the way because it, it's easier. So now I'm going to pull them down through, and they are going to be part of the tassel fringe. Okay. And don't worry about that knot. It's once you get everything all, all together, then that knot, it just, it'll be there. But don't even worry about it. Okay. So now these pieces become part of the fringe. Okay. So now this piece that you added at the beginning, that's where this comes into play. So I usually bring it kind of to the center and then I tie just a loop. Now, not really a knot. Unless, unless I'm not going to use it right away, let's say I'm going to put it away in a drawer, I might do a loose knot so this does not fall off. But usually I use it right away. So I'm just going to do just a loose, just fold it over. Okay. And now this is where you can slip and slide it off of the tassel maker. So now we are done with the tassel maker. Okay. So now what we're going to do is all this messy down here. We're gonna make it all neat and pretty. Okay, we'll get our scissors. And you're just gonna cut all those loops. First thing first, I cut all the loops. Make sure they're all cut, okay? So now we're just, now we're gonna give it a haircut. We're gonna make it look nice and neat. So I pull everything down. And then just kind of cut everything so it's the same length. Okay. And then the last thing I like to do is I like the um, I like the ribbons to have a nice um, like a triangle edge. So I just just clip it off just so the edges look really nice. And I do that to all all of them. Just in those inside ones. So that was something new. I'm going to have to see if I like to do that. If I like to have more um, of those ribbons on the inside. And I think I might have cut that one already. But let's do it again. Okay. And then this one. Okay. Let's see. How do we do? Looks pretty good. Other than my ribbon needs to be ironed or something okay you guys looking cute huh okay so there is our tassel all done our tassel is done so it's ready and waiting for um for our be beaded garland okay so this is the beaded garland that i did for this and when i chose my beads um 
because I had these three pieces, I laid beads out in front of me, like I would lay and see what kind of combinations. I wanted a lot of different combinations because you need to figure out how many beads you're gonna need for your garland. And you can have your garland as long as you want. Um, I have some of my garlands, like, I've just got a few, like this is, I would say this is probably a short garland. I've seen a lot of people make really long garlands, but this this is just a short one. And this is prefer for me because I just use them as a decorative purse. Well, they're all decorative, aren't they? Because I use this, um, I just, I don't mind that they're short and they'll just be laid on like a tiered tray or just laid um, on my, my hut with all my decorations. So I usually do mine not super long. I'm gonna grab a ruler so I can show you. Okay, grab my ruler. So I need to keep a ruler over here because sometimes, sometimes you all want to know. Um, let me clean this up really quick. There's my tassel over here, so I know where it is. I'll clean up my ribbon mess and get some things out of the way. Okay. Okay, so this one, um, I would say this one is a total, it's about 12, it's about 12 inches long. So I don't usually go much longer than that. Well, this one, I think this one's a little longer. This is probably a, the longest one I've really ever made. This one is 14, okay? So, and that's just how it worked out. Um, I just painted a lot of beads. So this kind of gives you an idea of maybe how many beads you'll need if you do yours a similar length of my, in, as mine. And depending on the size of beads it makes a difference too, because obviously the bigger ones take up more space and the smaller ones less. So if you were to use all small beads, you would need quite a few, right? Okay, so, um, you know, you could, this kind of gives you an idea. So if you want to, you know, refer back to this video to, to help you out. Um, so the next one that I am going to do for this, for our beehive here. Whoops, I just, I went, I tried to make a basket in the garbage piece of ribbon. I missed. I'm not a basketball player, you guys. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I'm a creator, huh? I'm a creative. I'm a maker. Okay, so I just did, this is my little, like my cheater sheet when I was deciding, do I want big beads, small beads, and then kind of how many of each. This was my cheater guide, and then what colors I wanted, ivory, black. I wanted to go ivory, black, ivory, gold, ivory, black, ivory, gold. It kind of just trying to think of um, different patterns you want to use. So I did, let's see, the gold, black, natural, gold, black, this case. So I did this pattern, ivory back, gold, okay. So the gold with the black dots, so this, okay. So what we're doing on this one, we're gonna do um, natural, are we doing natural? Gold, natural, oh, brown. We're doing this one, we're doing this one. So the ivory, so I'm gonna have the ivory bead and then the black, and then another ivory, and then the gold. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna alternate this pattern. Okay. So I'm gonna alternate that pattern. Let me put my ruler away. But um, on this one, so normally when I have my tags, they're, it's just all beads, all beads. But on this one, I have my beehive and then I have my my connector. It's called my, I call this the connector piece. These two will go together. Um, and I have the same thing going on on my tiered tray, my watermelon tiered tray. 
I have I have a watermelon and then a connector piece for the watermelon. So let me, I'll show you how to connect this. So with the honey pot, I added this. My beads are all running away. I better tuck them away. So with my honey pot, I just decided I didn't, I didn't want my honey dipper very far up. So I just did a few beads, even though I alternated my, my gold and my natural and then my gold. But after I put one bead on, I thought, oh, then it will be up, way up here. So I kind of, that's where I decided to put this dipper. Okay. So that's what I was thinking when I was doing this. I'm like, well, how far apart do I want these? So I think what I'll do is I think I will do, I'm going to do these three. And then I'm going to connect this piece and then we'll continue on. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our, our twine. We use a lot of twine when we do beaded garlands and then, um, and the tassel. It takes a lot of twine. But the twine is pretty inexpensive, I think. Um, this twine that I showed you and it comes in like the three packs. So these last me quite a long time. I use a lot at Christmas time. Like I said, I use this when I do my ornaments. So, okay. So um, I don't actually have a measurement, but what I do, and I probably should get a measurement. That would probably be helpful too. But what I do is I take like a three arm span. So I take a hold of my ribbon and then I pull it as long as I can, as long as, as far as my arm will go. So I do that three times. One, two, and three. Somebody might call that like, like a yard is an arm span, but depending on your arms, my I probably have really short arms because I'm short. <clears throat> okay. So, because if I do that, I want to have plenty of ribbon because once once you get going and you run out of twine, you either need to start over or make your garland super short. Okay, so we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take it and it's quite long at first. So we're going to go ahead and thread one side through the honeycomb. And on the back, this is something I didn't show when I painted the beaded garland. On the back, I just rub a dark burnt umber. I use a baby wipe and I just rub that on the back so it gives it kind of a finished look um, instead of painting the back. Um, like Instead of painting the back like the front, I just, do, this is how I do it. Okay, so then I'm gonna match my two up and I'm gonna find the center. And once I find the center, I am going to tie, I'm going to tie a knot. Okay, so what I do is I, I make a loop like this. I'm going to try to show you how I do it. So I make a loop and I put two fingers through. Okay, so I put a, my pointer finger and my thumb. And then I reach and I grab that. And then with this finger, I'm going to pull it down where I want to be and then I'm gonna I put two fingers on top right here because I usually do this pretty fast so I don't know if if you know how I usually do it and then as I keep those two fingers where I want them I pull and I make a knot okay then my knot stays down on top of my beehive where I want it to be and I like to make knots in between different areas of my beads as we go along, as you can see in these. You can, if you would rather put all of your beads right together, that is, that's great. And it will look super cute that way. But this is just a fun way that I like to do my garlands. And I do, I'll do them randomly too. Like this one, I put the three together and then tied a knot. Added one, add, add one, tied a knot put three together. So you just decide 
whatever pattern you want to do. Okay, so now that I have my knot, the center is securely fastened. Okay, so this is where you're going to grab your piece of wire, um, or if you would rather tape the ends together um, with a piece of tape, or some people will use um, a little bit of glue, but just make sure it's not thick. It will just stay snug together, okay? So I'll decide my pattern, which I did. I'm doing the ivory. And then I do, I'm doing the black. And then I have my ivory again. And I'm gonna keep these all together. If I was gonna do a knot in between, I would only do them one at a time, okay? So now I am gonna take my two ends and I put it between that wire. Can you see, is that showing how I'm doing that? Okay, so once I have that, I just put it through just a, just a little bit, just the toe end, not, you don't have to pull it all the way through. And then I'm gonna take my bead and slip it through. Okay, I'm gonna do that with all of these. Now I'll take this tool off, put it aside, slide all my beads down again, okay? And then now I'm gonna make that knot, okay? Do you see what I'm doing here? Hopefully you'll get it, but I kind of make a loop. I put my fingers through, grab a hold of it, and then two fingers I keep on top of the bead. Pull all the excess through. And now I'm gonna just keep my fingers here loosely but I'm gonna slide to make a knot. Now, when you have bigger beads, you do not wanna make your knot tight, otherwise it will slip outside of, your bead will slide right past it. So I usually don't do my knots tight, I do them loose. Again, I like that look, it's kind of a chunky knot, not a tight, tight knot. Okay, now that I have that, I think this is where I wanna add my connector piece. Okay, so this is where I'm going to actually, and if you don't have a connector piece, you would not do this extra step. So I'll take one of these pieces and you're gonna thread it through the bottom hole from the top down. But I'm gonna actually take my, my little threader tool, push it through, Put my twine there. I didn't get a hold of it quick enough before it slid out. Okay. And then just pull it through instead of, um, instead of what? I don't even know what I was saying, you guys. Okay. So this one is going to go through the front. Okay. Just beat. Oh, it just beeped. Okay, I'll go out there in just a second. Oh, I gotta go do something with dinner. Did I tell you at the beginning? Okay, so now the other piece you're gonna pull, pull through. So I'm gonna pull it through the back. Oh no, I'm gonna go through the front. We're gonna go through the front. Okay. We're gonna loop it through and then we're just gonna pull it as long as I got the right one, okay? Because I want the same one. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it down really snug here. Okay, so here's what it looks like on the back. And I'm, I'm wondering if I should do both pieces through and then, no, because then my knot wouldn't, then my knot wouldn't be right. My knot would not really have anything to hold on to. Okay, so that's what I wanna do. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a knot right here. So make sure everything is as snug as you want it to be. Again, just taking my thumb and finger, pulling all that excess out, keeping two fingers on the top. Okay. 
And now I have my connector piece. Look how cute that is. So when you like get it on your tray, you might hold it up and it might not hang just right. But laying on your tray, you can flip it the way you want. Look how cute that is, you guys. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, we're gonna take just a couple, a couple seconds. I have to run and um, do something with the dinner and I will be, be right back. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience. Okay, let me get all settled here. So it was one of those things I had to have. We're just doing one of those Stouffer's lasagnas that you, you cook it for 35 minutes without the tin foil. And then you take it out of the oven, put the tin foil on top, and then put it back in the oven for 65 minutes. So that's what I was doing. So thank you, thank you for your patience. Okay, so now that we have this far, my next one is the gold one, but I don't know if that would look quite right, you guys. So I'm gonna, this is, that's what I planned on doing the gold. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this one more time. And then we'll add the gold because I don't know that it would look right. It would look kind of funny, don't you think? I think it would be funny with that big, big gold one. Okay, so again, let's do our threading. Let's do our small and then our medium black and our small ivory. Gonna open up that wire. Gonna put the twine through and then we're gonna just thread them through. Okay. Okay, bring them all down again. Make sure that your thread is even. Okay, now we're gonna tie the loopy. We'll go a little faster this time, okay? Um, you can rewind if you wanna watch it like a little slower. So now we're gonna go ahead, now we're gonna add one, big one. I'm afraid if I just changed and did all the small ones, I probably would have a really, really short garland. So I think I'm going to go ahead and continue on with kind of what pattern I had. I will add these great big gold ones. Okay, and then I am going to add a knot in between each of the big gold. Okay, and if you are watching this on replay, say hi. Tell me that you watched the replay because I would love to hear from you. And let me know if you made beaded garlands. Tell me if you've made beaded garlands in the past. If you like to make beaded garlands, I really like to make them. I think they're fun and that's why I started designing some of these um, tags to go with the dangly tags they're really fun okay yeah now do you see my i've got more down here more of my twine make sure that you even them out before you tie your knot if you if you're tying a knot okay loop it around pull it up It's 
kind of hard. It wants to go underneath my little, this one wants to go underneath. Oops, I need to come down just a little bit more. I didn't have it close. Just had to scooch it down just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna have a big gold one. Loop it around. Okay, now we're going to go again with our small ivory, our black, and our small. Put the twine back through, and I know this is going to get kind of re um, repetitive, doing the same thing over, but I've got to do all this part before I can show you how to put that tassel on, huh? Okay, let's pull it all down. Make sure you get your twine even. Yeah, I'm glad that we um, decided just to keep this the same. That looks much better than having this big gold one there. But you can do so many patterns and you can paint oak oh, gold, big gold, huh? You can paint them all different colors. Um, you can also, I have also painted, purchased the the colored beads. Those are fun too. I've used those. Um, but getting them to coordinate with the color that you have painted your item, that is just, that's delightful. And it just makes your beaded garland match. It just makes everything look, so nice together. It really makes it give it really gives it like a professional look because you're going to be making these for your for your customers or your friends or your family. It's even fun to do together for a craft night. Get together as a craft night and craft with family and friends, make it beaded garlands. And I have a a beehive tear tray set in my Etsy shop. And my Etsy shop is Center Street Decor. That's the name of my Etsy shop and that I have my SVG files in. Okay. But I have a, a tiered tray and then I have my chunky, my chunky beehives, my chunky bees in there. This might end up being a short beaded garland because I don't have another gold one, which I probably should have done a few more large gold ones, but it may be a short one. We'll see when we get this on because this will be the last one. Okay, it's kind of hard to get, takes a little bit extra pull for getting those small beads over. And that's why I like this twine so much. It's not super thick. It's just a two ply. It's just pretty thin. Okay. This is the last knot. Whoops. Let's try that again. Okay. So this is oh, not, not too bad. Oh, that's actually pretty good. If I compare it to this one that I thought was pretty long. Oh yeah. Especially when we when we add the um the center attachment, the extender piece on there. That's really fun. And it's it is definitely plenty long. Okay. So now that we're done with our beads and we're done with our beading tool. Oh, no, we're not. Sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so now we are ready, and we still have plenty. Um, I have way more than I need, but you always it's always good to have more than you need than to run out, you know, down here and think, oh, well, I needed gardens really short. Although you can make really, really short. If you want to just do this beehive with three little beads um, and just 
dangle it that without this piece, that would also be super cute if you want to do just short ones. Those are super, super cute too. Okay, let's show you how we're going to attach our, our tassel that we made at the beginning of this video. I keep wanting to put this away, but I'm not finished with it. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to kind of split these two pieces that I have here. And what I want to do is I want to take one end through this loop here. And that's why this is holding, this twine here is holding our loop. So we don't lose the center of where we need to go with our other strings. Okay. So I'm going to take one and go one direction and one and go the other. So I put my beaded tool through here, through, I put it through one way. I'm going to grab my twine and I'm going to pull it through one way. We're going to go through that hole again. Okay. And then we're going to gra grab our twine and we're going to pull it through the opposite way. Okay. So if this is making sense to you, this is what we've got going on. Okay. So we took our our string, we put one one direction and one the other direction. Okay, now that we have secured the center of where our tassel is, this piece right here that we added, we can remove this. We no longer need this. You can also, which is what I do a lot of the times, I mean, I know it's not very much twine, but you can just add it to your tassel maker for the next time you're going to use it. So you've already got that piece. You don't have to cut that piece. I know it's a very short piece, but you know, it's short, but it's still, <laughs> it'll save you a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna snug, pull it up here and we're gonna tie a knot at the top where this other knot is, at so this knot that's right here on top of that ball, we're going to tie another knot right there. But um, And if you want it to be loose, you can do it loose, but I usually do kind of a tight knot. So yeah, I have way more thread than I need. So you will gauge how much thread or how much twine you're going to need. Okay, so I'm tying. I tied a loop on the knot on the top and I try to usually get it at the very top. Okay. And then I usually flip everything over. It's optional. You can just continue tying a knot, but I like to flip it over. Tie a loop again. And then I am going to tie a knot since I flipped it over. This is going to secure. Just going to kind of make a chunky knot there. Okay. So I do like to have extra thread. So what we're going to do is we are going to take these pieces and pull them back down through the tassel. They are going to become part of the tassel. So this is where we'll grab our um, easy beater again. We're going to just I just pull up through the center of, oh, am I even in camera? I hope I, okay. So I pulled it up through the center of that. And now I'm gonna put this piece through here, piece of twine, and I'm gonna pull it down through here. Now this has just become part of your tassel, okay? I can see I have a loose piece right here. So I'm going to find out which one piece that is and pull it a little bit tighter. There, it was just kind of sticking up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to slide it up, slide up underneath, slide it up underneath, put this through here and pull it down, okay? Now we are finished with the Easy Beater tool. Okay. 
now we are finished with that piece, that bit. Okay, so now we need to do just a little bit of a haircut. Okay, we're gonna take our scissors. And we're gonna give just a little bit of haircut, this piece, this ribbon looks a little bit long to me. So we're gonna give that a haircut. Okay, so now this is garbage or save it to what do whatever you need it to do. Put it on an ornament. Okay, so this, this is it. This is our garden. Okay, so now I have to think of how do we feel about all of these extra ribbons inside? Because this is the first time I did some extra ribbons on the inside. Usually I just do them on the outside, which is super cute too. But I kind of like adding a whole lot of color in there. You could use yarn too. Like if you if you don't have twine on hand and you like yarn, yarn could work too. Okay, let's lay all these out, you guys. I'm thinking these are turned out really cute. So you have to tell me. So which one is your favorite? We have lots of little twine fibers. Fine twine fibers everywhere. So I usually have to clean up my area pretty good the next time I paint, or I'll have twine fibers all over the place. Okay, so, and then this is our honey jar. Let's lay them all out. Cute, huh, you guys? So which one is your favorite? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, right? <laughs> Oh, you guys, it was so much fun hanging out with you today. I had a good time. So it was a lot of fun. Painted our beaded garland. Oh, which one's my favorite? Which one's your favorite? It's hard to tell, huh? So, I don't know. You're cute. I love the honey jar. I love the just be kind. And then the one we made today with the beehive. Really cute. Anyway, these are available these three files these svg files they're available in the shop so go and grab them and then come watch a video on how to paint them so much fun and then how to make a beaded garland with a tassel anyway you guys thanks for hanging out with me and i hope you have a fantastic day this is robin with center street decor svgs and more have a fantastic day everyone bye